for thoroughness sake, I wanted to bring up a issue that several students have been uh, discussing. If you've gone through all four courses of the CSENT CCNA material, you'll notice that Chapter 5 in the Connect Me Network is identical to Chapter 11 from the Route and Switch, and that includes all labs. So instead of doing the lab videos over again, I am actually just going to repeat the videos for Chapter 11 in Route and Switch with this announcement. Because again, I've gone through steps, I've gone through labs, and they are identical. 100% identical. Chapter 5, NAT, in Connecting Networks, and Chapter 11, NAT, in Writing and Switching Essentials. So again, all the videos for those belong here as well. Thank you. Configuring dynamic NAT. So I've already got it open and running. It's been running for about 40 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump in on R2. First thing we're going to be doing is getting to our global configuration mode. It wants us to set up an ACL called uh, number one. Well, not named number one, but we're using the number one to permit all uh, traffic belonging to 172.16.0.0. So we will do, it's a standard ACL. So access list one permits 172.16 wildcard mask all right so we've done step one next we're going to be going on to configuring r2 with a nat pool that uses four addresses from the 209 165 76 196 slash 30 address space so we're going to be using between 196 and 199 since we're already here, it will be IP NAT. I cannot type this morning, IP NAT. We're doing a pool of addresses. It did not give us the name, so the instructor guide does say put any name here. Any name here. Next will be the actual beginning address. 209.165.76 dot, we're starting with 196. So that's the starting address. Since we're using four total addresses, 165.76 dot 199. If you count them out, 196, 197, 198, 199, that's four total addresses. All right, we're using the net mask. We're using a 255, 255, 255, 252, r slash 30. All right, there we go. So again, notice in the topology, there are three network ranges that will be translated based on the ACL that's recreated. What happens if more than two devices attempt to access the internet? The additional devices would be denied access until one of the previous translation timed out or freed up because of the amount of addresses that we have. Next, we need to actually apply our NAT. So we're going to be configuring this guy right here. So we want IP NAT inside source. We're doing a list one because it's pulling it from our access list one. We're assigning it to the pool, any name here. So list will pull it from our access list, pool, and it will input, input our pool name. So we have done our association between our ECL and our NAT pool. 
next thing we have to do is we actually have to configure it on our interface. So on our serial 00 interface, that happens to be our outside. On our serial 001 interface, that's our NAT inside. IP NAT outside. Interface serial zero zero one. That's our NAT IP IP NAT inside. So we've got all of those steps. Now let's go ahead and let's verify that L1, PC1, and PC2 can access the web server. There's the IP address. So we're going to do our laptops, 209.165.201.5. All right, a one can. PC one can. We don't have so many addresses, so this one should actually time out. And it does, that's okay. So last thing we have to do, let's go ahead and do a show IP NAT TRAN. And here are the translations of our networks. And that's this slab in a nutshell. Again, thank you.